The Salem Witch Trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts in 1692. The trials were characterized by a mass hysteria that spread throughout the community, resulting in the execution of 20 people, most of whom were women. The events leading up to the witch trials began when a group of young girls in Salem Village claimed they were being bewitched by local women. The accusations quickly spread, and soon many people were being accused of witchcraft. The trials were held in a court of law and relied heavily on spectral evidence, which was the testimony of the accusers that they had seen the accused person's spirit engaging in witchcraft. The trials were marked by a lack of evidence and a reliance on hearsay and rumor. Many of the accused were subjected to brutal interrogation techniques, including being pressed with heavy stones and dunked in water, until they confessed to being witches. The hysteria eventually died down, and the trials came to an end, but the legacy of the Salem witch trials has endured. The trials have become a symbol of the dangers of mass hysteria, the importance of due process and the rule of law, and the danger of baseless accusations and prejudice. The tragedy of the Salem Witch Trials serves as a reminder of the importance of a fair and just legal system and the dangers of allowing fear and superstition to dictate our actions. The events leading up to the burning of the Salem Witches began in January 1692, when a group of young girls in Salem Village began to exhibit strange behaviors. They claimed that they were being bewitched and accused several local women of practicing witchcraft. The accusations quickly spread and soon many people were being accused of witchcraft in the surrounding communities. The accusations led to a period of mass hysteria, as people became convinced that witches were responsible for their misfortunes. The courts were flooded with cases, and many people were arrested and imprisoned without evidence. The accused were subjected to harsh interrogations, during which they were often beaten, deprived of sleep, or threatened with execution if they did not confess. The trials were conducted in a highly charged atmosphere, with the accusers often testifying against the accused in public. Many of the accused were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. The events of the Salem Witch Trials have been attributed to a number of factors, including religious and social tensions, economic pressures, and a lack of legal protections for the accused. The trials came to an end in late 1692, but the legacy of the events has endured and they continue to be studied as a cautionary tale about the dangers of mass hysteria, prejudice, and intolerance. The Salem Witch Trials began when a group of young girls in Salem Village began to exhibit strange behaviors in January 1692. The girls, who were between the ages of 9 and 20, claimed that they were being bewitched and that several local women were responsible for their afflictions. The girls suffered from fits and convulsions, during which they would scream, contort their bodies, and accuse others of witchcraft. They also claimed to see specters and visions of witches, who they said were tormenting them. The accusations quickly spread, and soon other girls in the community began to exhibit similar symptoms. The community was thrown into a state of panic, as people became convinced that witches were responsible for the girls' afflictions. The girls' claims of bewitchment were taken seriously by the authorities, and several women were arrested and imprisoned based on their accusations. The girls were often called upon to testify against the accused in court, and their testimony was considered highly influential in the trials. Despite later claims by some of the accusers that they had fabricated their stories, the legacy of the afflicted girls has endured. They continue to be studied as a key part of the events leading up to the Salem Witch Trials and as an example of the dangers of mass hysteria and the power of suggestion. After the afflicted girls in Salem Village made their claims of bewitchment in early 1692, the accusations quickly spread throughout the surrounding communities. More and more people were accused of witchcraft, and the number of arrests began to skyrocket. The accusations were often based on hearsay and rumors, and many people were arrested and imprisoned without any evidence. The accused included women and men, young and old, and people from all walks of life. The accusations were often made against people who were seen as social outcasts or who had conflicts with their accusers. In many cases, the accused were people who were perceived as different in some way, such as being poor, unmarried, or of a different race or ethnicity. The trials were conducted in a highly charged atmosphere, 
with emotions running high and the community gripped by fear. Many of the accused were subjected to harsh interrogations, during which they were often beaten, deprived of sleep, or threatened with execution if they did not confess. As the number of arrests and accusations continued to grow, it became clear that the trials were spiraling out of control. The authorities began to question the reliability of the accusers and the evidence being presented, and public opinion began to turn against the trials. Despite these concerns, the trials continued for several months, and 20 people were ultimately executed for witchcraft. The legacy of the trials has endured as a cautionary tale about the dangers of mass hysteria, prejudice, and intolerance. During the Salem witch trials, spectral evidence played a significant role in the prosecution of those accused of witchcraft. Spectral evidence referred to the testimony of witnesses who claimed to have seen the spirits or specters of the accused witches. The accusers would often claim that they had seen the specters of the accused witches tormenting them or causing them harm. This evidence was taken seriously by the courts, even though it was highly subjective and could not be independently verified. The use of spectral evidence was controversial, as many people believed that it was unreliable and could be easily manipulated. However, the courts continued to allow it as evidence, and it was often used to secure convictions in the trials. The use of spectral evidence came under increasing scrutiny as the trials progressed, with some judges and members of the community speaking out against it. In the end, the use of spectral evidence was one of the factors that contributed to the eventual collapse of the trials. Today, the use of spectral evidence is widely regarded as an example of the dangers of relying on subjective and unverifiable evidence in legal proceedings. The legacy of the Salem Witch Trials continues to be studied as a cautionary tale about the importance of fairness, due process, and the presumption of innocence in the legal system. The court system in colonial Massachusetts was based on English common law and had a significant impact on the Salem Witch Trials. The court system was divided into several levels, with the highest court being the Massachusetts Bay Colony General Court. In criminal cases, the accused had the right to a trial by jury and the right to legal representation. However, the legal system in colonial Massachusetts was often criticized for being harsh and punitive, with harsh penalties for even minor offenses. In the Salem Witch Trials, the accused were often subjected to harsh interrogations, and their rights were often violated. The courts were heavily influenced by the prevailing religious beliefs of the time, and many of the accused were convicted based on dubious evidence and confessions obtained under duress. The courts were also susceptible to the influence of public opinion, and the intense social and political pressures at the time contributed to the miscarriage of justice in the trials. Despite later efforts to rectify the injustice of the trials, the legacy of the legal system in colonial Massachusetts continues to be studied as a cautionary tale about the importance of fairness, impartiality, and the rule of law in the legal system. The legal proceedings of the Salem Witch Trials were highly contentious and often violated the rights of the accused. The trials began in the spring of 1692 and continued for several months, during which time more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft. The legal proceedings were conducted in a highly charged atmosphere, with emotions running high and the community gripped by fear. Many of the accused were subjected to harsh interrogations, during which they were often beaten, deprived of sleep, or threatened with execution if they did not confess. The trials were characterized by a lack of due process, with the accused often being denied legal representation and the right to a fair trial. The courts relied heavily on hearsay and rumors, and many of the accused were convicted based on dubious evidence and confessions obtained under duress. The use of spectral evidence, in which witnesses testified that they had seen the spirits or specters of the accused witches, was also controversial and highly subjective. Despite the protests of some judges and members of the community, the courts continued to allow spectral evidence as evidence. The trials ultimately resulted in the execution of 20 people, including 14 women and 5 men. However, public opinion began to turn against the trials as the number of arrests and accusations continued to grow, and the authorities began to question the reliability of the accusers and the evidence being presented. In the aftermath of the trials, efforts were made to rectify the injustices that had occurred. The use of spectral evidence was banned and compensation was paid to the families of those who had been executed. 
The legacy of the trials continues to be studied as a cautionary tale about the dangers of mass hysteria, prejudice, and intolerance, and the importance of fairness, due process, and the presumption of innocence in the legal system. During the Salem Witch Trials, the methods of interrogation and torture used to extract confessions from the accused were often brutal and inhumane. The accused were subjected to intense pressure to confess, and many were physically and emotionally abused until they admitted to practicing witchcraft. One of the most common forms of interrogation was the use of the witch cake, a mixture of rye meal and the urine of the accused that was fed to a dog. It was believed that if the dog exhibited symptoms of being bewitched, then the accused was guilty. This practice was eventually discredited, but it was widely used during the early stages of the trials. The accused were also subjected to sleep deprivation, and were often kept awake for days at a time in order to break their resistance. They were frequently beaten, or placed in painful positions, and were sometimes even burned with hot irons or scalding water. Another common method of interrogation was the use of the pressing or pen forte at Dewar, in which the accused was placed under a heavy weight until they either confessed or died. This was a particularly cruel method of torture, and several accused individuals died as a result of this practice. In many cases, the accused eventually confessed to practicing witchcraft, even if they were innocent, simply to put an end to their suffering. These coerced confessions were often the only evidence used to convict the accused, and led to the execution of many innocent people. The use of such extreme and inhumane methods of interrogation and torture during the Salem witch trials is now widely recognized as a violation of human rights, and a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and prejudice. During the Salem witch trials, 20 people were convicted and executed for witchcraft. Of the 20, 14 were women and 5 were men. The first person to be executed was Bridget Bishop, who was hanged on June 10, 1692. She had been accused of witchcraft several times in the past, and her previous convictions were used as evidence against her. Other women who were executed for witchcraft include Sarah Good, a poor woman who had been accused by her neighbors of witchcraft, Rebecca Nurse, an elderly woman who was highly respected in the community, and Martha Corey, who had spoken out against the witch trials and was seen as a threat to the authorities. Among the men who were executed for witchcraft were John Proctor, a farmer who had been critical of the trials and who was accused along with his wife Elizabeth, and George Burroughs, a former minister who was accused of leading a group of witches in a black mass. The final executions took place on September 22, 1692, when eight people were hanged in a single day. These included Martha Corey, Mary Eastie, Alice Parker, and Pudiator, Wilmot Red, Margaret Scott, Samuel Wardwell, and Mary Parker. These executions marked the end of the witch trials, as public opinion began to turn against the proceedings and the authorities started to question the reliability of the accusers and the evidence being presented. Today, the execution of the 20 people during the Salem witch trials is seen as a tragic and unjust event in American history, and a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria, prejudice, and intolerance. Their legacy continues to be studied as a cautionary tale about the importance of fairness, due process, and the presumption of innocence in the legal system. The public reaction to the executions during the Salem witch trials was mixed. While some members of the community supported the trials and believed that the accused were guilty of practicing witchcraft, others began to question the legitimacy of the proceedings and the reliability of the evidence being presented. Many people were horrified by the methods of interrogation and torture used to extract confessions from the accused, and by the lack of due process in the legal proceedings. Others were troubled by the fact that so many innocent people were being accused and convicted, and that the accusers seemed to be driven by personal grudges and biases. As the number of executions increased, public opinion began to turn against the proceedings. Some individuals spoke out against the trials, including Increase Mather, a prominent Puritan minister who criticized the use of spectral evidence and called for a more cautious approach to the accusations. Despite these criticisms, however, the authorities continued to pursue the trials and executions until the public outcry became too great to ignore. 
In October of 1692, Governor William Phipps disbanded the court of Oyer and Termine, which had been overseeing the trials, and established a new court that did not allow the use of evidence. Today, the public reaction to the executions during the Salem witch trials is seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of groupthink, prejudice, and the abuse of power. The events of the trial serve as a reminder of the importance of fairness, due process, and the presumption of innocence in the legal system, and continue to be studied and remembered as a tragic and unjust episode in American history. The aftermath of the Salem witch trials was marked by a sense of shame and regret among the people of Massachusetts. Many individuals who had been involved in the trials, including judges, accusers, and witnesses, publicly apologized for their actions and expressed remorse for the harm that had been done. In 1697, the Massachusetts General Court declared the trials unlawful and restored the rights and good names of those who had been accused and convicted. The families of the victims were also awarded financial compensation for their losses. Despite these efforts to make amends, however, the legacy of the trials continued to haunt the people of Massachusetts for many years. The events of the trials were a source of embarrassment and shame for the community, and many individuals were reluctant to talk about them. In the years following the trials, the people of Massachusetts worked to rebuild their communities and to restore the values of fairness, justice, and tolerance that had been lost during the hysteria of the trials. Today, the events of the Salem witch trials continue to be studied and remembered as a cautionary tale about the dangers of prejudice, intolerance, and the abuse of power. The Salem witch trials serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria, prejudice, and the abuse of power. The trials were a tragic episode in American history that resulted in the wrongful conviction and execution of innocent people, and continue to be studied and remembered as a cautionary tale about the importance of fairness, due process, and the presumption of innocence in the legal system. The events of the trials have important implications for modern times, particularly in the areas of criminal justice and human rights. They remind us of the importance of protecting the rights of the accused, ensuring fair and impartial trials, and avoiding the use of unreliable or biased evidence in legal proceedings. The trials also highlight the dangers of groupthink, where individuals become caught up in a collective mindset and lose their ability to think critically and independently. In modern times, this phenomenon can manifest in a variety of ways, such as in the spread of misinformation or in the demonization of certain groups based on their race, religion, or other characteristics. Ultimately, the lessons learned from the Salem witch trials can help us to recognize and avoid the pitfalls of mass hysteria and prejudice, and to work towards a more just and equitable society. By upholding the values of fairness, equality, and respect for human rights, we can help to ensure that the injustices of the past are not repeated in the future.